Welcome back, folks, to Let's Replay Albion. And when last we left off, we're not going to go to the prison by Amajo. It is a silly place. Instead, we're going to go to the final dungeon of the game and finish Albion. For we have done everything that we can. We've been to all the optional areas. We have fought in all of the dungeons, and the entire party is at maximum level and are now equipped with their best items. Sarah is now using the bolt rifle, which means her long range is now at 90 out of 70. Harriet is also using a bolt rifle, which means that her long range is 57 out of 40. And Joe? Joe is using the pistol, which means his long range is now at 105 out of 50. He is one of the two characters at the end of the game that can use the pistol, and it's the reason why I've been holding on to it for all this time. And this means now that Drur has the Dream Shield equipped, which means that uh, Drur's long and close range are now maximised at 99. Without further ado, let us go to the place that we've been to before. Hello you, how are you? You're just coming back from that very long trip, and you're just about to go do it once more. It's almost like you never get to rest. Uh, I don't think he actually does get to rest. It's not going to be very long before we're at the Toronto, at the uh, entrance that Tom and Joe saw on their retreat out, that they can use to get back in. And once we get to the Toronto, there is no going back. There literally is the point of no return that we will never be able to uh, retreat from. We will be in the Toronto until the end of the game, so we need to make sure that we have have more than uh, enough resources. I mean, we have uh, an absolute uh, load of healing potions, both the uh, health and spell point ones, so we're not going to need to worry about that. Uh, I think we want to go this way. Yes, this is the way that we want to go. Uh, maybe a little bit further down, though. We don't want to be out here for too long, because uh, we may suffer the negative effects of... Uh, there we go! The group is very exhausted, and they took a small amount of damage, which is absolutely fine. We'll be able to heal that up later. Using this here, we enter into the uh, small dungeon that uh, we met a few enemies in before, and there won't be enemies in it this time. None whatsoever. So all we need to do is move down into the uh, southern area to the exit, and that exit will lead to the final dungeon. There literally is no turning back now. Once we get there, that is, and here it is. We might as well save, just in case I change my mind and want to come back. For this is, as I will put in the save, the point of no return. Let us step over that point of no return, folks, and go to the final dungeon. So far, so good. Let's try to creep up to the Toronto while it's dark. Good idea! Avoiding the work machines and excavations, the companions actually reach the Toronto unnoticed, which is uh, quite an achievement. Tom succeeds in opening a side entrance without triggering an alarm. He closes the hatch as soon as everyone is inside. Welcome to the final dungeon! Done! Now let's find a console where we can enter our documentation concerning Albion. That will cause some trouble on board. We're not going to find any uh, enemies right now. And we once more are in the technological heart of the Toronto. There's a sketch of this area on that console over there. There is indeed, if we look at it. At the end of the L-shaped section in the west, there should be an access to the service level. That's our destination. Well, we're most certainly going to be going there. Let's go, shall we? It's uh, curious that none of the Iskai characters, or anybody that hasn't been on the Toronto before, isn't asking lots of questions about this area. Everything is quiet. We don't seem to have triggered an alarm. No, we most certainly have not, and we can pick things up like random cups just in case we want to. We most certainly do not want to. We could go this way. That is a poor idea as the door won't even open, and I imagine there'll be uh, enemies there that we'll have to face, and uh, we can't go this way because the door is locked. That door doesn't lead to our destination anyway. We'll go on. And indeed we will! We're going to head this way. Uh, maybe this is the door we need to go to. Yes it is! Let's go this way, shall we? There is an item that we do need to pick up while we're here. We haven't been discovered yet. Hopefully everything will continue to run smoothly. You are jinxing it right now, you know that, right? You're jinxing it. Imagine if there was just suddenly an announcement, doodle doo Tom Driscoll, please go to the flight deck, and it's like, no! Actually, it'd be more likely, uh, Tom Driscoll, we know you're there, please stop trying to sneak in. But uh, what is this here? Let's have a look. 
There is apparently nothing here whatsoever. Still no alarm. Almost too good to be true. That is a very important item over there. We need that item. That is a special screwdriver. We're going to take it. This item is so important that um, it is marked as a special screwdriver. We'll need to keep a hold of that. Where else do we want to go? There is a uh, panel here. A code input keypad. We're not going to be using that, however. Let us go this way. Ah, in the niche over there is a console that'll give us access to the communications network. Aha, we definitely want to use that, a deactivated communications console. Let us manipulate that. Let me add that thing. I will try to manipulate the console so that the showing is blocked from the AI for as long as possible. After this, I'm sure we'll have the AI and the security forces down our necks. Be prepared for a tough battle. They are not joking. Joe inserts the data tape with a recording of the life on this world into the console, and messes it for a while. That's it! The documentation is going out to all video screens and loudspeakers of the Toronto, starting now! The playback of the recording begins, and Joe's voice suddenly comes from all loudspeaker systems. To the crew of the entire Toronto installation, these are recordings which have been entered into the onboard system against the will of the ship's command. They document that there is highly developed life and even civilizations of intelligent life forms on this planet. We, Tom Driscoll, Joe Bernard, and a group of natives from the planet have entered the Toronto. Everyone is urgently requested to leave the ship. We have decided to take all necessary measures to prevent the Toronto from destroying this world. The ship's command will try to interrupt this transmission ahead of time. Now hear and see how it really looks on this planet. The documentary runs, uninterrupted so far, and shows screens of the nature and inhabitants of Albion. Well, that works. An alarm siren mixes with Joe's loudspeaker voice. Uh-oh, I think we've been spotted. Yes, we have. Here comes the security team. There are the terrorists! The security forces attack. This is going to be a particularly tough fight. It is a uh, Seku 1, Seku 2, and no Seku 3. The advantage we have here is that we're probably faster than them. Let's have a look here. This is the first time that we've actually been in a combat situation in the Toronto. Let's see how resistant they are to a frost avalanche, eh? I don't think they're going to be very resistant whatsoever. We also have the gun, which is probably going to absolutely wipe the floor of anyone that we shoot with it. Let's see how this works, shall we? No, they are indeed not fast enough, and indeed they have no resistance whatsoever to the effects of magic, which would make sense considering that they're from Earth. Let's see uh, how effective we are at defeating them at level 50, eh? The answer is that we're going to uh, attack there. They have a lot of health, but we have a... Okay, that is a lot of damage there, and that one is gone. We have no choice really but to fight this encounter. Ideally, we wouldn't want to fight this encounter because uh, these are people that we've travelled with, and uh, I imagine some of them are um, friends of Tom and Joe. But right now, they're just intent on killing us, so we're just going to have to kill them. It's either kill or be killed here, and we want to save Albion. So let's go. That is one attack, and uh, three attacks there, and that security guard is still alive. And there is a fireball, and that one is gone. And that gun is really effective. They haven't had a chance to actually attack us yet. We're going to uh, launch a selection of attacks here, and just in case, actually, we're far faster than them, so we'll just uh, launch some, uh, some ranged attacks here. And do we really want to use another um, volley of uh, pistol rounds here? Actually, I think we want to switch back to the... Um, just for now, anyway, we want to switch back to the um, the crystal throwing axe. Mainly because we only have so many bullets, and that means passing the uh, dream shield back over to Joe. Because, unfortunately, Joe can't use the other one right now. But don't worry, we may be getting something even better than the pistol eventually. We are going to be getting something better than the pistol, most certainly. 11 damage, 6 and 8. You'll notice that we're dealing far less damage than we normally do, because the armor that these security forces have is quite significant. And that one is gone. And now we advance forward and deal even more devastation. Who would have thought, eh, that swords and uh, crossbows would be far more effective than pistols, eh? Then again, we do have magical crystal throwing axes. There we go. And that one there is gone, and that one managed to resist every single attack there. 
and they are now unfrozen. We don't want them to uh, to do any more attacks. Also, is that chainmail he's wearing? That almost looks like chainmail, but I think it's actually just some sort of um, some sort of uh, futuristic body armor. You might as well focus your attacks on that enemy there, because Dreher is about to hit that one with uh, all of his uh, might, and uh, let's uh, put it this way, Dreher has a lot of might. This is the first encounter of the Toronto, and it is going far easier, um, or rather it's far easier than it was the first time round, mainly because we're maximum level. There we go, I think we could quite safely move here. Seems like a good idea. A few ranged attacks here will certainly help. And is that one gone? Yes, that one is gone. And the other one will, yep, is also gone. What do we get here? We get a lot of stuff. We get uh, some shock staffs here that deal 15 damage. They're actually quite good melee weapons, so we'll just grab a few of them. We also get a lot of overalls and pistols. We might as well grab another pistol, but we got 52 more bullets, which is very important. Also, these uh, weapons here aren't that heavy. They're only 500 grams. There we go, we do want to leave the rest of the items. I think we most certainly want to head south now, and uh, I think we could safely equip the pistol for the foreseeable future. That went rather well, wouldn't you say? Also, I forgot to only grab one canister there. We'll pass the uh, shield back over. Excellent. Do we want to head down here? We might as well see what is down here. Probably away, ooh, there's another screwdriver there. We might as well grab that. We're not going to fight an encounter for a little while now. We don't want to go that way. We also probably want to go, ah, this way. We don't know the access code, however. We're going to have to find that out. The opening code for this segment was, ah, yes, 1712. Thank you very much, Tom. 1712. Thanks for the reminder. We're going to be now going to a, um, I believe it's a 3D dungeon now. I think so, anyway. There we go. Correct code. Service panel opening. This section of a service deck is the only part that still lies between us and the fusion power plant. Let's go. And down we go into a dungeon. And I don't know if we're going to have to fight them. We might have to fight them. Also, the music has changed now because we most certainly are in a dungeon area. So we'll just save this as the final dungeon and move on. We have more than enough resources, however, so we should be fine. The service robot, normally busy with its mysterious tasks, moves purposefully towards Tom and his companions. They are now enemies that we must fight. And they are pretty tricky. There is a service robot and more service robots. The question is, can they be frozen with a frost avalanche or two? We're about to find out. All right, a ranged attack here, and we want to use this pistol to its full effectiveness. They are not faster than Syra, which is not surprising, and not surprisingly either, they are completely unable to resist the effects of the uh, Frost Avalanche, which means this encounter is rather easy. A few attacks there, and there, that's quite good actually that the crossbow bolts are good. Also, look at that. That is four hits because my word is Joe absolutely amazing with that pistol. It's a good thing that we held on to all those cartridges, eh? It's just a good thing in general. We want to attack this one now, I think. I don't remember what these enemies do. I think they actually um, hit quite hard if you uh, let them, but we're not going to let them. That one is destroyed, which means that uh, they don't have that much health. Uh, we certainly want to uh, keep focusing like this. Another hit there, and one there. That one is probably going to go soon. That one may also go soon. That one, uh, quite a lot of damage there. Is that one? No, that one is still standing. Hmm, I think we want to switch our attacks up here a little bit, so that we have Syra attacking this one too. One attack, two, three, and not four out of four, unfortunately. They do have a lot of health, which does make sense because they are robots, and uh, oh dear, they are now unfrozen. 
I think another Frost Avalanche is uh, needed. There is a reason why I got all the uh, crystal throwing axes, because just in case we need to, uh, we run out of ammunition for all of these guns and uh, bolt rifles, we have the, oh that one is just gone, we have the ability to deal range damage anyway. And that one may be gone soon as well, that one's certainly just going to take a lot of damage. That pistol is just absolutely brilliant, I actually want to save that um, ammunition for now. There we go. I think we can actually quite safely uh, focus attacks on this one for the moment. We'll switch this out for the... Um, definitely switch this out for the Crystal Throwing Axe for the moment. We actually don't need to re-equip that shield for now. You're not going to be hit by anything. There we go. One hit, two, three, and four out of four. Marvellous. It's actually pretty good that we have all this uh, ranged combat training. It does make this area a lot easier. Could we actually use some teleportation magic here? Teleport who? To where? Let's actually use teleportation, shall we? We haven't used that spell yet, it might be effective here. And unfortunately Dra completely um, resisted the spell, which isn't good. Wow, they have a lot of health, and I mean a lot of health. It's a good thing we have literally hundreds of these bolts, but uh, we may end up running out of them. I may not have purchased enough. I think we should just focus on attacking right now. There we go. Is that one now gone? The answer is no. Ah, that's probably why, because these attacks really aren't doing very much. I'm going to do an experiment here. Will, if we advance the party, and that one is now unfrozen, would, for instance, a uh, fireball deal a lot more damage? We're about to find out how resistant these are to uh, magic. The answer is probably not at all. Well, not at all resistant, that is. Well, never mind. We'll never find out. 145 experience. It did take a little while, but we did get through the encounter in the end. And here are lasers. We want to be very careful of these. There is a laser barrier right in front of Tom. The smell of hot metal hangs in the air. The light beams are so powerful they make the dust in the air glow brightly. You can technically get past them by, um, a laser barrier. Those things are absolutely lethal. Let's try to figure out how to deactivate the lasers. We might be able to open some panels with a special tool. Maybe then we can deactivate the barriers. Indeed we can, and this is why we brought Joe with us. Because Joe needs that screwdriver. Let us uh, hand one of those over now. There we go. You want to use an item, which is this screwdriver. If you don't have Joe with you, you'll actually take some damage opening these up. Joe loosens the screws. The cover plate falls to the floor and shows complicated electronic controls. Only Joe can do this without harm. Joe tears out some of the electronic components. Sparks fly out of the sabotage controls. Which means now that this has been deactivated. And here's a nice touch, by the way. The panel is now on the floor there, which is great. Let's uh, move over here. Ooh, this probably is a, um, a large control light. Does this do anything? Ah, it's a switch mounted to a plexiglass uh, wall. As soon as Joe operates the switch, the wall instantly disappears into the ceiling. Apologies for the minor interruption there. Let us carry on and uh, switch out the leadership of the party here back to Tom. Ah, it's only a temporary one, I see. So we're going to have to go into... Ooh, we can't just go into here. I think there's something blocking the... Um... Ah, the switch lights up briefly, but apart from that, nothing happens. We need to... Ah, we need to wait for that to be uh, like that and then quickly walk through, I see. It's a timing puzzle! And we can't exactly get through there yet because we're missing something. That's okay, we have the whole rest of this area left to explore and more encounters to find, and more laser barriers that we're going to have to deal with. We definitely need to deal with these, and there doesn't appear to be a way to, uh, there is no way actually to, uh, get past that without walking through it. You can actually survive, there is a chance you can survive if you're fortunate enough, and, uh, we most certainly don't want to, uh, test our luck right now. Most certainly not. We want to go the other way instead, and uh, I think figure out the uh, what we're doing wrong. Ooh, there actually is somewhere down here. There are more enemies that we're going to have to fight. Where are they? They're somewhere nearby. You could uh, see the monster eye lighting up. Are they? Ah, here they are! There are a lot of them! 
we're going to most certainly freeze them in place and uh, try our hand at using magic here. This would probably be where having Thunag would be very beneficial. It may also be where having like Goddess's Wrath at a high level would also be useful because uh, oh my are we probably going to have to switch out using uh, yeah we'll probably have to switch that out because we're just going to use an absolute ton of ammunition otherwise to no effect. I know it means that we're that much less likely to hit but uh, in the end we need to conserve this ammunition for some really tricky fights later on. At the moment we have more than enough resources to uh, do whatever we like here in terms of uh, just dealing damage very slowly. I mean Syra can cast how many more of them? Another four frost avalanches which gives us more than enough time to take out all of these service robots. At least hopefully anyway. There we go, you're all frozen in place and now we'll find out just how effective a fireball or two thrown um, their way is. The answer is uh, melee attacks. That is an amazing critical hit that just took out one of them. That was fantastic. Did you see that? That was like 240 odd damage. Also melee attacks seem to do absolutely fine against them. I think we'll just keep using, uh, definitely think we'll just keep using um, ranged attacks here with the crystal throwing axe. We'll be switching back to the bolt rifles later. There we go, that is not really a lot of damage there, we're just waiting for critical hits at the moment really, and Tom is the most likely to deal them. Also there we go, there was one critical hit that took care of another one of them. The critical hit training certainly is coming into its own now isn't it? We can see the benefits of uh, leveling that up to maximum. The hours spent getting blue healing potions have paid off at long last. Also the fireballs are really effective. Really effective indeed. If only we still had Thunag, eh? And there is another critical hit to take care of another one. We'll just move forward now and uh, fireball this one here. Well, we focus attacks on that one there and uh, actually why don't you just fireball the one directly in front of you? That seems like a very good idea. Just focus on the ones directly nearby and these ones won't really be any problem. Oh well, there's one critical hit and there's another one! Ha <laughs> ha! Marvellous. We'll just use a, uh, I think a crystal, uh, a frost crystal here, there we go. I'd say crystal frost there, that would have been very different and uh, most likely not an attack in the game. We'll just uh, have some ranged attacks in that direction and hopefully a critical hit or two will take care of these ones. This is probably an area we really need to go to, to uh, undo one of those panels. Unless we, there we go, one critical hit uh, later and that one is gone and another one there. Ah. Here is a puzzle. A number of different coloured control lights are mounted on this wall. We're gonna have to remember that, aren't we? Oh, we most certainly are. Also, we really don't want to die horribly here to a trap that's full of death lasers. If you'll remember for the first time we played through this, we uh, danced through those death lasers quite capably with Melthas last time. Also, can we use uh, recuperation here? No, we cannot. So we're just gonna have to use a uh, healing potion right now for those spell points. We have plenty of them. Oh my, do we have plenty of them. So I'll catch you next time, folks. For when we come back, we'll continue exploring the Toronto and trying to find our way through this rather large area. Oh my, is the final dungeon large. So I'll catch you next time, folks. And I'll see you then. Later.